Welcome to this week's edition of ONW Now. I'm Sarah Miguel alongside Jacob Guernsey. Today we have a recap on Trunk or Treat, a sneak peek behind the scenes of Guys and Dolls, a recap of Sports with Game Day, and more. So without further ado, let's get started, Ravens. ONW Theater is known for its fantastic musicals. This year they are performing the Broadway-renowned musical Guys and Dolls. Let's take it to Riley Kramer and Grace Jerzak for a story on one actress's theatrical journey. <laughs> Senior Mackenzie Durr has worked her way to the top to become one of the lead roles in Guys and Dolls. I started in choir and I was taking acting classes, so I've been in all the musicals here at ONW. We had Wizard of Oz my freshman year, and then now we're doing Guys and Dolls my senior year. And it's just been like a really cool experience, just kind of like moving up the scale for theater. Being a lead at ONW has always been a goal for Mackenzie and now all of her hard work has paid off. Like ever since I was in middle school, I remember coming to Olathe Northwest and watching all of the theater kids perform and just like gleaming at them and just wanting to be a lead someday. And so it's just been really cool like having all the work that I've put forth and finally being able to be a lead in a musical. Theater instructor Miss Murphy has watched Mackenzie grow through her years here at ONW. Her professionalism is very evident, her talent is very evident, and so it was so delightful that um, she was the right fit for Adelaide this year. Even though Mackenzie's career here at Northwest is coming to an end, she is pursuing her other interests beyond high school. Theater will always be a part of me. Um, I'm not going to pursue it as a career necessarily because I'm interested in more of like the medical. I want to be a pediatrician, but I think through my college, I'm going to, you know, do little things with theater and just get involved in various ways. Just because it's always going to be a passion of mine, and it's always going to like be true to my heart. Just because I love the feeling of performing on stage, so I don't think that's something that I'll ever want to let go. Be sure and come see Guys and Dolls November 2nd through the 4th at 7 p.m. For ONW Now, this has been Grace Jerzak and Riley Kramer. Trunk or Treat this year was a huge success. Ron Stanley and Cindy Weeks give us the details. Candy, costumes, and cute kids. Everything a successful Halloween needs. What are you doing here today? Uh, collecting candy. Northwest students were quick to take up the opportunity to raise money and provide a fun place for kids to trick or treat. So we're trying to provide like a safe environment for kids to come and get like candy, hang with all their friends, but also be able to experience like all the students at Olathe Northwest and like all the clubs that we've been doing. Senior Kaylee Kappelman explains what it took to put this event together. Um, there was a lot of planning, like we had to find out all the clubs that were like wanted to be a part of it. There was a lot of advertisement, so we make sure we could get a lot of the kids in the community because that was the goal. Thank you to all who participated in this special event. For ONW Now, this has been Ron Stanley and Sydney Weeks. Now, back to the desk. Last week, our Northwest engineering team held a costume reveal, presenting a special Halloween gift for a local young boy. Let's send it to Jacob Kaufman with the details. For over 100 years on the final day of October, children dress up as heroes, villains, and just about any person or thing you can think of. But being confined to a wheelchair makes it very difficult to find a costume. For six-year-old Gabe, that changed this year. Olathe Northwest's Engineering a Better World class, in partnership with Walkin' and Rollin' Costumes, worked for two months to make this a Paw Patrol police car complete with siren, lights, and Gabe's name proudly displayed on the front and tires. This is the second year Walk and Rollin' has made a costume with O&W, but a first for the Lilies. They uh, obviously chose us through a mobility conference that we went to for Gabe, and um, they chose Gabe to be able to uh, pick this costume. The siren seems to be Gabe's favorite part, announcing his presence to everyone who can hear it. The engineering team worked very hard to get this costume done on time and enjoyed every minute of it. My favorite part, for sure, was just seeing the look on his face when this thing was revealed. He, he seemed to be having a ton, ton of fun with it and it was as rewarding as I expected it to be. So. Gabe and his family plan to use the new costume for even more than trick-or-treating on Halloween. There's um, a school parade that he's going to be in um, next week as well as a party at his school. Wishing luck to Gabe in his candy collecting quest, this has been Jacob Coffin, now back to the desk. Olathe Northwest has been conquering the world of sports. Let's take it to game day to hear what's been going on. Hey Ravens, welcome to Game Day Northwest. I'm Jay Curl with CJ Vredenberg. Halloween night sure was cold, but that didn't stop Raven Nation from supporting soccer in their costumes. The Olathe Northwest boys soccer team unfortunately lost against a tough Blue Valley West team, dropping the game 3-0 and a chance to play in the state semis Friday. The Ravens had chances to score, but the boys couldn't quite get the ball in the back of the net. 
The team finished 16-1-2, only dropping one match of the entire season. Congrats, guys, on a great season. Even with a tough defeat Tuesday night, several Ravens received postseason awards, including Evan Kalapek with Sunflower League Defender of the Year, Caleb Ragland taking home Sunflower League Midfielder of the Year, and Chase Klusman with Sunflower League Forward of the Year. Well done, boys. Last Saturday, our Raven volleyball team traveled to Topeka for state and did the unthinkable, winning back-to-back -back state championships. They went through Hutchinson, Manhattan, Blue Valley North on Friday to get to the finals. Defeating Washburn Rural, they advanced to the championship for a rematch of last year's game against Blue Valley West. After winning the first six points of the set, building an early lead, the Ravens would win a set 25-18. to It was a close battle in the second set. Blue Valley West was up 16-11 to before the Ravens rattled off an amazing 11 straight points on their way to another 25-18 victory, clinching back-to-back -back state titles. This is the first time any sports team has gone back-to-back -back in Northwest history. Throughout the tournament, the girls only dropped one set. We're actually younger than the team that we had last year. So we had some younger players that are maybe sophomores or juniors that had to step up and, and a freshman that had to step up and play at a high level. Um, and credit to them because they worked their tails off um, all season long. Last year it was kind of like we had a lot of motivation and our team was really good so a lot of people were expecting us to win but this year no one thought we were going to be as good so I'm just really proud of the way we came out and it felt different because we had, a, we had something to prove. We had a title to hold and we did it so I'm proud of that. The football team took on Shawnee Mission South Raiders for the second week in a row. In true Northwest fashion the Ravens came out strong and held their own throughout the entire game beating the Raiders 34-8. The Ravens came out ready to win their very first playoff game. The first play of the game started off well when Braden Cook bombs a pass to Weston Davis, setting up on good field position with a 35-yard gain. The next play, Andrew Dumas dodges multiple tacklers and sets up for Ravens' very first touchdown of the game. Minutes later, the Ravens are dangerously close to scoring. Trevor Adams slams through the line, smashes the running back, and loses the Raiders four yards. After that, Jack Parks makes a leaping catch for a Ravens killer first down. On defense, Trevor Adam blitzes, catching the run of off guard and causing a fumble. To finish the game, we hand the ball to John Bowman, who scored the final touchdown of the night. Last Saturday, two of our very own Ravens, Ashton Dane and Leah Wellman, placed 31st and 67th at the state cross-country meet held at Rimrock Farms. Great job, ladies. And that's all for sports this week. Back to the desk. Ravens, do you want to show off your love for O&W? Next Thursday, November 9th, we will be having an all-school lift-up video, and we want everyone to participate. For those of you in clubs and athletics, talk to your sponsors and coaches for further information. Now let's take it to eCommunication Entertainment for a teaser of next week's lift-up. On Wednesday, Ms. Wingfield's physics class came together to present their ideas on how we can make waves to make beneficial changes in society. Ms. Wingfield's regular physics class has taken a new stance to teaching by doing projects throughout the year to promote a better learning and understanding of the material. So we use uh, two speakers. We use one to represent the earthquake, using the sound waves to represent seismic waves, and we use uh, another speaker to neutralize it, but we had uh, three hole punch clippings on the top to represent her. That's all we have for today, Ravens. Don't forget to watch the Raven Minute tomorrow. And also don't forget to add us on Snapchat at ONW Now and on Twitter at ONW underscore Raven Daily to keep up with what's going on. For Jacob Guernsey and the rest of the Convergence team, I'm Sarah Miguel. Have a great week, Ravens.